This video is sponsored by Magic Spoon. Hey everybody! As expected, I got distracted from making a video about Star Wars Empire at War with a shiny new game that just launched the other day. I assure you that that video is still in the works, but I want to play this first to get my sneaky shooter itch scratch. So recently, a game called Blood West just dropped and I've been having a great time with it. It launched with a cute little image of Grandma getting you Blood West because she knows you wanted blood and Weird West, so she thought that this was the next best thing by combining the two. While one of those games isn't even out yet, I think it's safe to say that Blood West is in entirely its own thing and something that I've been waiting for for a good minute now. So Blood West is a sneaky shooter set in the Old West where you'll be doing a whole lot of exploring in mines, caves, and abandoned cities. Oh yeah, and you're an undead cowboy who's been brought back to this world by a seemingly benign cosmic force in order to rid the world of its perpetual state of night and all the undead horrors now walking the earth. There is no escape when you die and you are hopelessly outnumbered by hordes of undead that keep coming out of the ground as you begin to realize that there are more of them than you have bullets available to you. Lucky for you, the supernatural forces have their own ways to aid you if you can help them to weaken the evil forces grip on this land. So let's talk about the sneaker shooter part of Blood West. There's a few things you should know about Blood West. One, you are outnumbered. Two, you are easily overpowered, especially when it comes to some of the bigger enemies. And three, while you can take down one or even two of the basic ghouls in a head-on fight with the starting axe, or better yet, the nicer axe you can buy later on, that's gonna leave you near dead in best case scenario and likely in a compromised position. Your best bet is to keep your distance and strike from the shadows. Easier said than done though, when most of your weapons are loud firearms and the ghoulies seem to have poor motor controls as they sort of bob and weave all over the place while they're walking, making it very hard to line up a headshot. The real trick though is going to be landing a bunch of those headshots in quick succession in order to clear an area before you get noticed. To make matters worse, when they get you, even if you are undying, that doesn't mean you get killed with no penalties. Every time you die because a bunch of dudes saw you, your soul is going to incur a flaw which is going to get you a debuff. Uh, I've been down this road before by the way, and I can assure you that all you can find is pain. Lucky for you, there's ways to remove those flaws or even avoid them altogether. There's a somewhat rare drop that can occasionally even be found at the merchants, which erases flaws on your soul. And then there's the coins. Coins are found in certain places and on certain enemies, and if you wear one as a trinket, it'll prevent your soul from getting a new flaw upon death at the cost of using up that coin. Or alternatively, if you don't want to burn a trinket slot, you can use one to make an offering to the Totem of Souls, and it will make you have the luck of the cat or the, uh, yeah, you don't get a flaw on your soul when you die ability. However, I find that you can get some better buffs from the totem, so that might not even be worth it. So if it wasn't clear already, it's in your best intentions to sneak around at all times unless you're in the process of running the quite literal hell away from something that's found you and you're going to need to be accurate and precise with your weapons as ammo is scarce and body shots don't do you much good in this game. Long range headshots are king in Blood West and a must for trying to clear out certain areas. One problem though, you're using old yeehaw guns that have limited range so you can't snipe from way out in the boonies until you pick up a certain perk. The perk to remove all range penalties on headshots is essential for clearing out open areas in Blood West, as Blood West loves to give you these awesome sight lines where the enemies are just wandering out in the open, but your six shooter doesn't quite have the range for a full damage headshot or even a partial damage headshot when you're way far away. I'll admit that once I got my hands on the Winchester rifle and the buff I was talking about earlier, there was no going back for me as that 30 yard range made all the difference in the world versus the 20 to 25 yard range of a pistol. And also for the close range stuff, I found a special shot off shotgun that gives you health bonuses for headshots to cover my close ranges. By the way, if you miss, the shotgun will laugh at you. And it wouldn't be a stealth game if you couldn't manage how much noise you make and how visible you are to enemies. Blood West resolves the see to crouch versus controller crouch debate by having one of those be your toggle to crouch and the other being your hold down to stay crouched. Visibility and line of sight is only half the battle though. Enemies are listening for you too and conveniently the sneaky ometer lets you know if you're getting close to not only being seen but heard too, which I have to admit it's weird at times because uh, they don't notice the loud gunshots but they'll notice my footsteps but frisk yes I was just telling 
them. That's probably a game pay. Bleh, that's probably a gameplay balancing. And you've thrown me off my stride here. I gotta let you out, whiny boy. There's stuff that helps you make less noise as you sneak around, but also stuff that lets you do other cool stuff at the cost of being noisier. It's theoretically possible to forgo stealth entirely if you really wanted to with the right build, but you're gonna have quite the time making that build and surviving as a loud player, like especially in the early game when ammo is super scarce. Now let's talk about the exploration part of Blood West. It's big on exploration and all that good stuff. The level is all one big continuous sprawl with no loading screens and no fast travel zones. The most you're gonna get is two designated safe areas and then anything else out there should be considered spooky country. A big expansive area isn't enough though. All throughout the map are networks of caves and mines and some of these cave networks are insane. Like there are entire cave networks within the cave networks. Like I swear this map might be just as big vertical as it is horizontal, I can't tell. Then there's the old abandoned town, the fort, and all those little encampments scattered across the west that are each set up in their own little way that gives you lots of wiggle room to try and deal with them. Like, I hate to take pot shots at another game, but the best way I can describe it is that these are the anti-Far Cry game outposts and how each one will require an entirely different approach and is unique. Now, obviously you're gonna have reasons to go to a lot of these places, mainly helping out your new totem buddy. The quest markers are less exact locations of what you're looking for and more the general starting point as to where you should start looking for something. Often the game will be nice enough to leave the marker at the entrance of a cave network that you'll need to explore to track down an artifact you've been tasked with finding, and it'll likely be in the deepest reaches of those caves behind a whole lot of baddies. I'm on my second playthrough and I'm still finding new stuff even though I was pretty thorough on my first go round. And that's the big thing with Blood West. There is a ton of stuff you can miss no matter how thorough you thought you were. When I finished my first go round, I checked on the four for Steam, which, uh, big mistake by the way, never go to that place, to see if anyone had reported a kind of crash that I had experienced when playing the game. And seeing that no one had, I went to Discord to put it in the feedback chat because if I can help not perpetuate the monster that is Steam forums, I'm gonna help not perpetuate them and use Discords. I stuck around for a while and people started posting their screenshots with weapons and trinkets that I had no idea were even in the game, and frankly, I felt silly after saying that, yeah, as the game is, a sharps rifle or zoomed weapon could utterly break the game, but as it turns out, there is a trinket in the game already that gives you a zoom. And of course, on top of that, there were screenshots of places that didn't look like anything like where I had been, even after doing a whole lot of exploring and climbing around and trying to get into areas that at the time I was pretty sure I wasn't supposed to be in, only to find that there were item drops that implied that I was clearly intended to be there. Speaking of finding stuff that shows I was clearly intended to be in a place, Blood West has all sorts of prizes hidden in nooks and crannies everywhere you go, and it's a big part of making sure you're topped off on ammo and gear. It's not gonna be anything like huge catches of gear, but instead lots of spare bullets and bandages of dubious sanitation spread out in all the places where you have to be looking for prizes to find. Of course, there's also rare weapons and trinkets in certain spots, but you're gonna have to search real hard to find those. Exploring is gonna be your lifeblood for most of the game, as before you can start really stacking up those looting and money buffs, there's no way you're going to be able to afford enough bullets to make it through major areas, and and most of the time, the respective vendors in this game aren't going to have near enough ammo on sale to provision you for like a big area. So it's entirely worth it to look in every nook and cranny and look in all those boxes and just scour the map to find stuff because you will find so much stuff. It'll be great. Let's take a quick break to give some love to our sponsor for this video, Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon is excited to announce the launch of their limited edition cereal bars. So in addition to your cereal boxes, be sure to grab some cereal bars while supplies last, and be sure to use my code CHARLATANWONDER for $5 off your order. That's right, Magic Spoon has come out with some sweet bars, baby, and not the awful kind that people upload to SoundCloud. They're dropping cereal bars. Magic Spoon is offering cereal bars in cookies and cream flavor and cocoa and peanut butter flavor, which is a combination combination of my two favorite cereal flavors that they make, and you can take these just about anywhere. It's similar in nutritional value to a protein bar, but 100 times more fun and enjoyable because, seriously, even the good protein bars make you wonder why you didn't just bring a shaker full of whey instead of trying to gnaw your way through them. Magic Spoons bars are just the right amount of softness and are a wonderful break from all the protein bars that feel like I'm trying to chew on a used tire. And every bar of Magic Spoons cereal bars has 10 grams of protein, 
protein, only one gram of sugar, and only four net grams of carbs. And as always, Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund you your money, no questions asked. So click the link below and use the code charlatanwonder for $5 off, or go to magicspoon.com slash charlatanwonder to try out their delicious new cereal bars while supplies last. Now shipping to Canada and the United Kingdom too. Now let's get into the good stuff, the spookies. Now Blood West isn't overtly horror, but it's got a lot of strong horror themes such as cursed lands, occult meddling, and summoning dark forces to try to deal with the other dark forces. Let's go over the premise again with a bit more detail. You're an unnamed cowboy who, by the way the totem tells it, had quite a checkered past and was morally gray enough to where you could be resurrected and made to cleanse the land of whatever's gotten a hold of it. You are not in a friendly place. There are a total of three, actually let's say two friendly faces and one ambiguously friendly entity in all of the world right now and you don't even really see their faces. You are alone and there is a lot of scary stuff out there in what used to be civilization. And it wouldn't be a spooky game without some spooky monsters creeping around. The first of which is the raised dead, which while they look pretty freaky, aren't too hard to deal with so long as you keep your head about you. And when they're in groups, that's when they become a problem. The real threat here isn't how they moved. Raised dead shamble about in a way that makes it very hard to hit them in the head unless you're directly facing them and they are directly facing you, and if they're directly facing you, they've most likely seen you and are charging you. That's when things get bad. Then we've got the miners, who are about what you'd expect from a haunted mine out in the Old West, the spitty boys that look more bugged than man at this point, the birdmen who are going to shoot back at you and do a pretty good job at dodging your bullets since they can fly and all, and the girlies with the shotguns. Oh yeah, and then there's the giant Vendigo that shoots screaming skullhead enemies at you and eats golden bullet headshots for breakfast. Yeah, there's nothing quite like rounding a blind corner in this game and seeing one of these make eye contact with you. And any game can have a good host of creepy crawlies though. What really sells it is the atmosphere. Blood West is in a perpetual state of nightfall as the accursed land is held by whatever evil forces are laying claim to it. The few signs of civilization are all long abandoned if not outright destroyed as the dead walk the earth. The one rail line in and out of town has been utterly wrecked on both sides and even if it was intact you couldn't go far on the train as it's been derailed. What really sells it though is the voice acting, like holy crap the voice acting is good. The totem absolutely nails it on every line delivered, and the main character sounds reminiscent of Caleb from Blood, but a little more gravelly and it's just awesome. When the soldiers at the fort were building a new well, they found this skull, and they gave it to the colonel, who liked such oddities and old artifacts. He didn't even realize when the skull started whispering into his mind. They found the gold under the fort, thanks to these whispers. And thus the way to the curse has been opened wide. The unnamed cowboy has plenty of good lines for both killing baddies and grabbing items around the map, so they don't get stale either. To ashes. And done. Take this land of you. That'll come in handy. Even the vendors have unique and interesting voices on them that makes me not want to skip their default dialogues whenever I come back to a safe zone to unload all the goodies I found and stock up on supplies. Now I love this game and I did have a great time with it, but let's not be dishonest here. Blood West does have a few issues right now and they're worth mentioning so that you know what you're getting into. The first of which that's not related to any major bugs is a uh, power creep. Once you start stacking up the buffs you get when you level up, the game becomes a point and click adventure, especially if you find the Winchester rifle and you've got so many bullets handy that you're not sure why you're even buying them from vendors anymore because the guy doesn't even have the incendiary rounds you prefer to use on low level enemies because bottom Body shots will eventually burn them out. The boss at the end was kind of a challenge though, but that was more along the lines of learning the pattern while also learning that the game doesn't automatically move another item of the same type into your equipment slots after you use one of them. The boss was also an, a bit of an odd way to end it, but eh, I was going with it. And it's also an early access right now, so there are some bugs and glitches as to be expected. In my first playthrough there was nothing major, mostly uh, spelling errors and the flavor text and the occasional wonky aimed 
down sites. I did have a single crash though when I started selling to a vendor really, really fast and I think I might have accidentally overloaded his inventory, but that might have been something to do with my own machine as I wasn't able to reproduce it and no one else seems to have encountered it. So maybe it was indeed just a fluke. Shaw! Oh geez, you seem upset there, but you said 1.0 or no video. You went back on your word about unfinished games. I have never felt so betrayed in my life. You absolute monster. I am so unironically triggered right now by- Okay, geez, yeah. I'm really sorry about that, but I'll come clean about it. I played through this not expecting to want to make a video about Blood West, but it won me over. Additionally, they have a clear roadmap of what they want to do and a rough timeline of when it's going to happen. I felt that while Blood West doesn't follow the letter of the rule, it followed the spirit of the rule by offering a solid six hours per playthrough with a lot of replayability and how you can play using different weapons and builds. And they even say themselves by their own admittance that yes, this is a playable game right now. This is not some vertical slice. I'll admit that the phrase 1.0 Oh, or no video might have been a little too extreme and I should have gone with my other thought on how to main the rule, demos don't get videos. But early access is a gray area here and I'm gonna have to fine tune things as I go and do it on a case by case basis for early access games. I'm sorry if this whole thing feels silly to some, but the main intention of the rule was to avoid making videos about blatantly unfinished games that have no clear ending or even a clear game plan in sight. Blood West is clearly not an example of that and I felt that it deserved a shot. Heck, I'll probably give Lunacid a video too once that comes out because by the sound of it, Kira's already got a lot of work done there and it's coming out this month. I guess since we're derailing here, it's a good time to talk about something. Unfortunately, I've been extremely burnt out trying to make all these big videos and frankly, they've all been tanking badly. I don't know what exactly I did to piss off the algorithm, although when I talked about this to a few other creators who also make long form stuff, they told me they've had similar issues. We've all been feeling absolutely exhausted lately trying to make the next huge video, but we get less and less viewership despite putting our all into these videos and we don't know why. Part of me wants to blame how YouTube really wants to do the jealousy doctrine on TikTok with their shorts now, and they're ironically pushing for shorter videos after literal years of telling us to push out those run times for more mid-roll ads. But maybe it's really just me and inadvertently making my videos bloated for content instead of making videos that deserve their full runtime. Either way, it stings like no other to pour your heart and soul into making something really cool in hopes that you'll all like it and then I get smacked with that bottom tier performance rating again and again. As for how this makes me feel, well, I won't repeat myself here, but if you really want to know, I linked a twit longer I posted a couple months ago where I talked about that in the description because I don't want to talk about it here. The only update on that is that I'm still left on red and now I'm looking into alternatives to uh, get everything sorted. Why does this matter right now? Because at the end of the day, I have to step up and admit that I am the one common denominator for all all my problems and that might sound pessimistic until you pair it with the other phrase which is I am also the one thing that I can change the most to solve my problems and I am the one thing that I have the most power to improve. I realize now that looking back at my videos the stuff that I consider quote unquote trash content is what's been really doing good and that maybe like story time vlogs and the let's plays before them the age of the video essay is coming to an end. That being said the stuff I used to look down on and call video book reports are doing great and not just on my channel. Stuff like Iceberg videos, stuff like Wendigoon's amazing synopses of internet-based horror, friend of the channel Izzy's recounting of old school MMOs and the insanity that was pre-banned Tumblr, and my own content like the Kenshi video and the Bioshock storyline video, they're long form, but they do great. So I'm taking a page out of Seth's book and saying that we're not doing bigger and better videos anymore. No more good videos because the algorithm doesn't want good videos anymore. Instead, we're doing fun videos. There's no point and doing anything analytical because video essays have been ran into the ground. And while I could blame people using everything as a canvas for their ideologies, I know that I was a part of the problem too. So instead, it's time for fun videos. I have no idea what that means right now, but we'll figure it out. Bringing everything back onto the rails here, my final thoughts on Blood West is that it's a good time and a really promising indie, which is entirely worth that $15 asking price right now. I'm currently doing my second playthrough using no bullets and instead relying on the bow and melee for maximum sneakiness. If you've been looking for a good sneaky murder game to scratch that stealth itch, look no further. Blood West is great and there's more to come from it. Now, to give you a fair idea of what to expect, I got a solid six hours out of my first playthrough and my second looks like it might be four or 
5, but sky's the limit. I've seen people on my friends list on Steam who have well over 10 hours in this game, and I wouldn't be surprised if there's even more stuff to find based on all the screenshots I see in their Discord, and with stuff that I have no idea where to start looking for even. Right now, the plan is to add those two whole new areas similar to the one you can play in now, and by their own estimate, the game proper should be done by this year. Now, that being said, stuff happens and the future is unpredictable, but I have a good feeling about this based on what they've said and what they've shown already. And even if something does happen, well, we've still got a really solid six hour game that's plenty replayable. So up next, we're gonna do that Star Wars Empire at War video that might be one of the last of the old format, or at the very least, it's not gonna be big. It's not gonna be like a big hour long deep dive as I realize I just can't do those anymore. Instead, I wanna just make the videos fun and really show off what games have to offer. After that, I've decided I need to put my money where my mouth is and finally start the production of the sequel to the Kenshi video. It's only been like, what, two years? Screw it. It's an excuse to play the game again, and that's what I really want. Other than that, I need to get caught up on prepping for Halloween in July, which obviously they are not gonna see for a while, and it's uh, still gonna be stalker themed, but I need to figure out how I'm gonna handle uh, certain things, and also now that it's clear that Stalker 2 isn't gonna happen in time for a video in July. In the meantime, please stay safe, stay indoors, bundle up when you gotta go out, and enjoy this cat video. Saucy boy, I see you are greeting me. I've been away for a long time and you need to sniff. This is like, wow, this is extreme close up, floofle. Mm, Cause you just, you want them scritches. If I like lift this, yeah, you can kind of see him now. Uh, I guess I'm just gonna have to go on faith that this is hopefully recording the cat. I could really just, yeah, what if I, there we go. Yeah, this is the better option here as Frisk needs to nuzzle my beard every time I go out. Hmm, I wonder if you can pick up that purring. Was a good little fluffle. Trying to make a little beard house. Oh, geez. Yeah, I should just turn this off. Boy needs his pets.